The term creativity has had different meanings over the centuries. The ancient Greeks, for instance, had no words to express the act of creating as we understand it today. For them, artists only followed rules and imitated nature. With Christian thought and the Latin language came the idea of creatio ex nihilo, the creation out of nothing, an act that could only be associated to divinity. It was not until the 17th century that to create begins to be used to describe human artistic activity. Today, we are further stretching the semantics of this verb and applying it to machines. Our languages are evolving. AI systems offer us new means of creation. But they are not just a tool. They are means with a high degree of functional autonomy with which we can take the creative activity into new levels or dimensions that would have been impossible to venture in without them. I think it is useful to look at creativity not as a skill that can be attributed to machines or to human beings, but as something that arises in the joint activity of human beings and computer systems. I think that machine creativity should not be understood only in comparison with human creativity. This is analogous to the evaluation of intelligence. In 1950, Alan Turing proposed his famous imitation game to assess whether intelligence can be attributed to a machine. For creativity, similar tests have been proposed for the evaluation of computer-created art. But such value assignments, unfortunately, focus mainly on the resulting products, not on the creative processes themselves and the context in which these processes are carried out. A painting generated by an algorithm that only applies a random function can surprise us as new and valuable, but we would not consider it creative. I think that ultimately, creativity is intimately associated to freedom. That is what makes it so odd to attribute creativity to an, an AI system only, because to what extent can we speak of the freedom of a computer system. For me, the computational creativity technologies of the future will be valuable if the emphasis is placed primarily on enhancing the creative freedom of human beings in symbiosis with the functional creativity that AI systems can provide. Well, if we look, for instance, at Rembrandt's work, we see that he created it in a human socio-economic context, and it has to be understood also in a historical context. Each portrait he painted is part of a complex network of intentions of the painter, the person portrayed, and the person who commissioned the work. All of this in the context of 17th century Flemish society. An AI-generated AI Rembrandt, such as, for instance, the portrait generated by the next Rembrandt project, which was a neural network trained with all portraits by Rembrandt, so as to be capable to create a new, non-existing portrait in Rembrandt's style, such artwork is also located in a human socio-economic context, mainly that of the 21st century and part of a complex network of intentions of researchers, art historians, programmers, and promoters, and all within the framework of today's techno-scientific societies. Consequently, AI-generated art is not merely a nemesis, it is genuine creative artwork. But we cannot judge creativity only by the product, by the product created or by its creator, be it human or a machine, or even taking into account the creative process. Creativity is a much broader phenomenon.